happy week eight bachelor nation peter finally narrowed it down to four women and things are getting intense hey you guys welcome back to our shared news bachelor recap oh my god what an episode so much drama but before i get into it i'm your host renee ariel and i'm fiona zaring and make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can watch all of our bachelor recaps okay there's a lot to dive into but before we do, we're gonna go over everything that happened in our 60 second recap. Last night on The Bachelor, Madison got another one-on-one -on -one, and to nobody's surprise, Peter told her he was falling in love with her, but she didn't say it back. Then Natasha finally got a one-on-one, -on -one, but it was too late. Peter friend zones her. Based on his deep connections with the other girls, he know he actually spent time with. Kelsey and Peter once again had an emotional combo and they rolled around on a hill. Kelly, Victoria F, and Hannah Ann get a three-on-one. -on -one. We all finally think Victoria F is out of there after she tells Peter he's always in a mood, but instead he gives her the first rose. It comes down to Kelly and Hannah Ann, or as Kelly put it, and attorney and a child. Hannah Ann gets the rose, the end. Yeah, you guys, last night was craziness. I, where to begin? <laughs> Let's start with the one-on-one -on -one dates yeah. because Madison got her second one-on-one, -on -one, which was a big deal because she hasn't had a one-on-one -on -one since the first one-on-one -on -one ever. I didn't realize, like, I feel like I've never doubted their connection. Like, mm -hmm. I've always kind of thought of her as a front runner. I've always thought, like, Peter is, like, totally solid with her. But that's a long time to have yeah. not spent any, like, really deep quality time together. And again, it went really well. They're really happy. She's still a front runner. But, like, I was a little bit shocked by the fact that it's taken them that long. The fact that Victoria F basically had yeah. two one on ones back to back and Madison waited weeks. Weeks. I mean, think about how long that is. When you go on a date with a guy, imagine not seeing him for another like five to six weeks. <laughs> oh my God, seven weeks. Yeah, because week one to week. That's insane. Nuts. But anyways, what we learned on this one-on-one -on -one is how religious Madison is, and that's a big, uh, very important to her, for her partner to be very religious as well and to have a good relationship with God. So this was a discussion that we have not heard before from Madison. I think is, this is the first time she's brought up religion. I was gonna say, this is the first time she's gone like really deep. Yeah. And she really expressed like, this is not just like, religion is not only a part of her life, it's like, it's kind of every like it's, it's everything. everything. She said it it's can make or break a partner for her, and yeah. I think it's kind of interesting that she brought it up now. You know, I know. I will say Peter's response concerned me slightly, and let me tell you why. The vibe I got from him is that he was brought up in a Christian household, but it's not something he really prioritizes in his life right now. Mm -hmm. But it feels like he was trying to say something almost to please her because he likes her so much. Or as he said, he's falling in love with her. Right. So that's where it kind of concerns me because this is clearly a make or break thing for her. And yeah. he might've been saying certain things just so she would continue to fall for him. It's definitely like, I totally feel for her because obviously first you have to figure out like, do I like the guy? Do yeah. we have a strong connection? Do we have fun? And then so much time passed, so she kind of didn't have an opportunity to bring mm -hmm. up something this serious until right now. And I definitely agree with you. I think like he didn't say, hey, like I'm an atheist, we'll never align. Cause like, I don't yeah. think that's true. I no. do think like he mentioned faith as part of his life. It's important to him, but he's definitely not considering it. I think is like the number one thing he's looking for in a partner. And based yeah. on what she said, as it is her right, it seems like that kind of is her number one thing. So I wonder if, I wonder if it would be as, as good of a match as sort of they both thought it was if they weren't mm -hmm. kind of looking through those like rose colored glasses of like, this is a reality show and we're in love, you know? Yeah, no, 100%. On top of that, the other very interesting thing that happened on this one-on-one -on -one date is that Peter told her that he was falling in love with her and she didn't say it back and she hasn't said that yet. Mm -hmm. Even in the promo that was teased, like she's saying now she can see herself maybe fall, whatever she said. So she it hasn't it happened very yet. seriously. Obviously, I mean, she gave him a lot of affirmation. She got really excited. Yeah. She was so touched by it. They kissed, like he didn't seem unhappy with her no. response. Like no. it definitely, but you're right. She did not like look him dead in the eyes and go, yeah, I'm falling in love with you too, duh. Like she is definitely taking the love of it all like very seriously. Yeah, and as she should be. Absolutely. Um, so loved that one-on-one -on -one date with Madison, thought it was super sweet. Thought It basically just confirmed, yeah. I think our thoughts that she's probably a front runner. Yes, like top absolutely. two. Uh, moving on to someone that was sent home this week, you guys, Natasha. 
Listen, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I saw this coming from I was a mile say, away. Did you know? I, had, I just knew. She's had no airtime. Like yeah. they've given her no airtime, and that's not on her at all. It's no. on the editors of the show and the producers of the show. But we, this was the first time we've really actually seen their connection. And I, what I saw a lot on Twitter is people being like, "No, everyone was saying in the house that they did have a big connection. We're just not seeing it." I feel like that's not fair for us as an audience because here I am watching it, being like, "Why is she still here?" Right. And there's this whole connection that we missed which is, I think, their mistake. But the other thing is, like, not to not to doubt the people on Twitter, <laughs> but, like, how deep of a connection could it be? Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I get that it's deep, but without that one-on-one -on -one day, mm -hmm. I, I, it's moments. It's, like, yeah. moments it's of more a good connection. It's more of, like, connection. banter, it's banter and Exactly. And yeah. the thing is, they had a good date. They had fun, but... He said it himself, I think, like, maybe I waited too long. Like, how at this stage in the game is he supposed to have a gut feeling with her that's so strong it trumps one of the other girls? Like, it's, totally. It was set up to fail. It know? was set up to fail. I will say, they definitely seem to have a very playful relationship. Totally. But Peter doesn't like fun. He doesn't want a playful relationship. He wants tears, he wants drama, and he wants them now. He so needs, it was set up to fail for many he reasons. He needs it to be, like... Do or die. Yeah, like he needs it to feel like so intense. He needed Natasha at one point to cry and say, I don't know. I like Natasha. I do too. And the best part of her date is when he sends her home at the end and he's like, I know you'll find someone out there. Like, I want you to find someone and be happy and whatever his whole spiel was. And she goes, I know I will. Because she I, will. Because she will. And she's like, I hope you do too. I, or I just hope you do. She. That was a mic drop moment was for moment. me. I thought she killed it. I loved that she just kept it together. Like that could have been, anytime you're rejected, super hard. Especially because totally. she put her heart out on the line, but she still came out on top after that date. And I give her major kudos for that. Do you think she has the kind of personality type? Because a lot of people really liked her. A lot of people were excited to see her go. Do you think she has the personality type where if they said like, hey, come do Bachelor in Paradise, she would? Or do you think her journey is kind of like bookended? I think that she will go to Paradise. I could definitely see Natasha in Paradise. And I think she would thrive. So, I was going to say, she's so assertive. She's like, I would kill to see her in Paradise. Me too. Moving on to our last one-on-one one date of the episode. Kelsey got another one-on-one -on -one with Peter. And let me just say, Kelsey, you guys, she's been growing on me. Like, I love, I'm a Kelsey fan now. It I took, think ever since McKenna. I was gonna say, it took like a long time. It did. But I also think like, again, there's so much that we don't see. There's mm -hmm. so much that is like a little bit engineered. Like, yeah. maybe they're just finally giving her her shot. Maybe she's just finally like, gotten all of the emotions out of her system and feels a little more confident. Like, who knows? But she's been better. She's been a lot better. I'm here for Kelsey. Their one-on-one -on -one date, seemed exhausting at first. They made her hike up a steep hill. I didn't like this date. I didn't think it was uh, like, it. Vis the thing is, visually, the hill wasn't even that exciting to me. Like, no. I didn't get it at all. And I felt really bad. They made the best of it. There was like a producer like, picture this. Kelsey, Peter, on top of each other, making out on a hill. And I everyone's just was like, nervous they were gonna okay. Down. <laughs> yeah, it was just like the getting up, then being out of breath, and then they're laying not to be romantic and sweet. Like they're out of breath and tired. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they had to take a moment and they're like, oh, wow. It was exhausting. But they had a good time. They had a good time. She did it. She did a great job of like really, I think, going for it mm -hmm. and like rolling with the crazy <laughs> activity. <laughs> um, I will also say props to Kelsey for having a playful day. Yeah. No tears, yeah. but then they obviously made it more serious in the evening portion of the date. But it was serious, I mean, in your opinion too, but like in mine, I feel like it was serious in a way that I wanted. It was a real yeah. conversation about real stuff and her family and like who she is as a exactly. person. It wasn't about petty drama. No drama, and I was here for that. Exactly. I will say, I was like, holding my breath at one point because I was so concerned she was about to get a bad edit when she said again that my parents got a divorce. And I thought that they were trying to like Annalise her. I don't know if you guys remember Annalise from Ari season when they kept playing up like her childhood traumas. I was worried what they were gonna do with Kelsey 
is make it look like she keeps talking about her parents' divorce. I'm so glad they did, they did it. Yeah. And it was just like a more a deeper look into what he can expect from mm -hmm. her hometown date, mm -hmm. which I really appreciated. Mm -hmm. And they like Peter's really into Kelsey, and I I actually really love their dynamic I together. Say, I don't, and I like their dynamic. I like how she can open up to him mm -hmm. in a way that's like emotional, yeah. but doesn't feel like it necessarily did in the beginning when she was just like weeping. You know what I mean? Like she it's seems different. to find like strength with being vulnerable with him. She's emotionally stable now. And I will say that's not on Kelsey for being in a, an emotionally unstable place in the beginning. It's just a very toxic environment, I Absolutely. think. And when you have people like Tammy around, I'd probably be crying all the time too. And it's built to make you feel insecure. So all of the reasons above, like I think now that she feels more validated, she's fine. Because a lot of the times, if someone validates us in a relationship or we're getting the right love that we need, we'll be fine. It's just when someone, it's, it's, a, take, it's a give and take. And when someone's just taking mm -hmm. and you feel insecure and you feel like it's everyone else and that you're, not, you're second best, we'd all get in our heads. Yeah. So I get it. And I'm glad she's having this moment. Me too. Good for her. Okay, but enough about Kelsey because there was a three on one and oh my God, it stressed me out. Me too. Because this is the first time that they started giving Kelly a villain edit out of nowhere. They teased it in the promo. I'm not happy about it because let me tell you, Bachelor editors, producers, I know how you franken bit things and put certain audio clips next to other audio clips that weren't back to back. And I know you did my girl Kelly dirty and I'm not cool with it. Me either. So please feel free to send me a DM at Renee Ariel, let's talk. It just <laughs> seemed, you know what it seemed like to me? What? Like obviously, those dates are way longer than we see. Like oh, 100%. They look like they're over in a total of like 15 minutes. And yeah. that's clearly not true. Mm -hmm. And that moment where she's like, send her home, chop, chop, and she looks like so like, I mean, I like her, so it, I, I love like, Kelsey. I was like, oh, I was look at her. Kelsey. Oh, look at her being confident. But like, it did come off like a little whatever was probably after he like took her off to the car and they waited and a producer said like, are you excited to see her go? And she was like, no, chop, chop. Like, I want my moment. It was so not edited like that. Like, no. it's just tough. But you know what? We said it last week. I don't think they were a match. She's really smart. She's and really driven. They're in different places different in places. their life. Um, I just didn't like how they, because I think what they did, they saw everyone was loving Kelly so much and they saw the response that they're like, oh no. It's gonna look bad that Peter randomly sends her home and chooses Victoria F over her. So they wanted to edit it to make it look like she was problematic when she wasn't, and we we all know it. She was. wasn't even being problematic to she the wasn't. other girls. All of her bitchy moments came like one on one to the camera when she was yep. like speaking her mind. And Los you know us. What? Good for her. Good for her. She's gonna be fine. Okay, so she obviously was sent home, but before that happened, these were like the series of events. So mm -hmm. first things first, Peter talks to Hannah Ann. Who wrote him that really sweet letter? It was cute. Letter, I it was sweet. Yeah. Super cute. But I think she also knew, like, he's not gonna send me home if I didn't. I even honestly miss. think she's shy. Like, I think just like sitting down and being like, I love you, like, it's, it isn't her style. <laughs> so she like wrote it all down, had her points, looked him confidently in the eye, and was like, I have this cute letter for you. Yeah. Because that's how she can like express herself easier and like smart. She had to do something, right? I think she, personally, I think Hannah Ann has learned how to hang on for dear life. <laughs> I I think he really likes her, but I think in her head she knew, mm -hmm. and this could be me, listen, I love Hannah Ann, this is nothing against her. <laughs> but I think that if you're like, I'm gonna be the bachelorette, or if I don't win, like, I'm gonna stay on as long as possible, you cry. That's like rule number one with Peter, is you cry. We Tears. all know it. Tears, which she did in the last date when he left, and she's like, what? do I do? She started crying. And now she's like, he wants me to open up. What do I do? Well, I can't just like say it to him. So she wrote a list. Mm -hmm. And listen, no judgment. We I love you, Hannah Ann. She's super smart. cute. She nailed it. She always It looked, worked. Yeah, it worked. She stayed. Um, so, but she didn't get the first rose. So the first rose went to the second woman. No, the second woman we talked to I can't even, I'm like so exhausted by the Victoria F nonsense. I know. But the second woman he talked to was actually Kelly. We oh, right, right, Kelly. right, and then she said fun, and then all. Yeah, she said the, the whole problem of their conversation 
was that she called their relationship fun and Peter was not here for that because I don't know if you know this, relationships are not supposed to be fun. God forbid you're Duh. looking for fun with the That's person ridiculous. you're trying to spend the rest of your life with. What no. an insulting word to use. <laughs> so naturally, Peter's like, I don't know about Kelly. That was it. Don't that you was feel like that was the that moment? Was the whole, he was like, and yeah. why do you say fun? Or however he put it. And I was like, oh shoot, he is she messed Not up. Here for it. She yeah. should have cried. She should have cried. Kelly, that was her rookie mistake. She should have cried. And then we get the most, maybe the most annoying conversation of the season, which is saying a lot. Victoria F. says that Peter's always in a mood when she talks to him because, because, just, he wants to talk about her breakdown that she had last episode where she said she's not sure what she wants and she might leave and all of that. He wanted to talk about that and that, that was a problem and that meant he was in a mood. She said at one point, I don't remember if it was this episode or another episode, I think it was maybe this one, how she like can't believe that just happened. She's like, I can't believe that's how that conversation just went. Like I think things just happen and then she goes, wait, what did I do? That's because things happen to Victoria F and it's not her fault. Yeah, just it, it, just, that. it drove me crazy to see her, like all of these girls are trying so hard and she just keeps playing like this hard to get, angry, sad mix of complicated and it's working for her, but it's so unfair to him, her, everyone else, us. I'm tired of it. I'm so tired of it. Like. I know because she's still on the show and whether she wins or not, like she's not allowed to say anything or defend herself yet, mm -hmm. but I kind of need her to because mm -hmm. it's becoming very irritating mm -hmm. to watch someone continue to get um, positive reinforcement for really bad behavior. She just doesn't seem like she even wants to like, She's just whining. That's what breaks my heart. Like there are, uh, like Natasha seemed really interested. Like she's giving it her all. She was yep. trying to make it work. Like Victoria F keeps making it be like, sell me. No, like, I'm not sure, you sell me, and like, I get that that's a valid emotion, but I also am tired of it. I'm so viewer. tired of it. And, I don't know if you guys caught this, so, when Victoria F gets the first roast, which was a shock to us all, on this group date, he walks with her to the goodbye van, mm -hmm. whatever you wanna so call it. So weird. So weird, with the rose, which we're like, okay, so she's going to get it, otherwise this is weird, weird. to bring the rose. But she thinks she's going home and she goes, I don't wanna go, she whines. She goes, I don't wanna go home. Thank you, I caught that with the subtitles. But like, are you kidding me? I hate it. The I whole thing was so strange. And on this group date, Peter was like, I don't need to go into dinner. Like, I know, I already know. Yet the date goes into dinner. Yeah. They just are stuck out in the cold rather than going into a nice it warm building. It was a building. long day. A long day. That, you have to look at this through the lens of this was a long day. Long day. day. Kelly took a nap. I would take a nap too. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Hannah Ann is so emotional so when she emotional. finds out she stays, she breaks into sobs, which they made it look like in the promo that Hannah Ann was going to be super upset or bullied by Kelly or something. No, poor girl was just so emotionally drained, she has to release it somehow. So again, don't trust all of the things don't you trust in the promo. Don't trust But we'll get into that later. We'll get into that. So anyways, Peter comes back, he reveals that he kept Victoria F. No one understands, but they're like, mm-hmm. And then he keeps Hannah Ann and gets rid of Kelly. And this conversation between him and Kelly, I love how unemotional it is because she's like, yeah, this is like, it's basically like, yeah, this is stupid. She's like, like, I'm gonna go be an attorney. And yeah. I'll see you never. Have fun marrying someone, lol, and leaves. Doesn't even give them a cry in the goodbye van, which no. they always get a cry moment. And she didn't give it to them. And I loved that. Me too. Me too. Way to go, Kelly. Way to go, Kelly. Everyone's thrilled it's Hannah Ann. Like they are just they all, healthy yeah. of all people. Is what the most a relationship thrilled. evolution from Roller champagne coaster. gate to here. That is the relationship I am most proud of. This That's season. the love that yeah. we needed this yeah. season of The Bachelor. So if we don't get it with Peter, we certainly got it with Kelsey and <laughs> Hannah Ann. Okay, you guys, moving on to our more serious segment, one of my favorite segments of our show, Deep Thoughts on Dumb Quotes. The dumbest. This week's quote comes from uh, one of our favorite people on the show, Victoria F., who, before going into this three-on-one date, said, I don't think going into tomorrow is like an exciting day because it just means that one of us is leaving and that's not ever exciting. 
I don't think going into tomorrow is like an exciting day because it just means that one of us is leaving and that's not ever exciting. Mm -hmm. So Fiona, mm -hmm. do you think that going into tomorrow is ever exciting? No. No. I mean, here's the thing. Mm. On a certain level, I get where she's coming from. Mm -hmm. But mm. on another level, it's only it's only not exciting if you're the one who doesn't go home. Mm. Or no, it's only I can't even I can't even Thinking's follow my hard. own thoughts. <laughs> basically, if you're safe, then it is exciting. It's only not exciting if you have to leave. So basically what she's saying is she's trying to make it sound like she's thinking about everyone, but really she's just like, I could be going home. I just loved this quote from Victoria. Also, another one, just another Victoria F moment was, I feel like you're always in a mood. Great moment. But enough with Victoria F's quotes. Listen, you guys, <laughs> the next couple of weeks look insane. And that promo that we got last night looks like craziness that I was not expecting. We got so much. We got more from the mom. We got more oh. revealing that it was Madison who says it. There's a lot. So to help you out, to help us out, to help our obsession out, we're gonna explain to you everything that's going on in a whiteboard breakdown. Now that we're nearing the end of Peter Weber's very dramatic season, we've got a lot to think about. A lot. Hence, the question marks you may see on our whiteboard. Well, thankfully for you, we are investigative journalists. Yes. And Fiona and I both saw the promo for next week and the rest of the season, and you know what we figured out while watching it? Nothing. Everything was what I was going to say. Sorry. But also, Everything. if you think about it, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> but today, we're going to tell you what we think happens based on the promo, and we think we know what's up a little bit. We think we know some things. We know some things. We're on the tick and talking. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's start with the fact that we think someone of these four ladies is Dunzo. Next episode. Who well, is that? Somebody is definitely Dunzo. Dunzo. Definitely Dunzo. Woo! Listen, hear us out. You may have watched that promo and noticed that Kelsey did bring Peter back to her hometown and he met the family, but she didn't have many clips outside of that, did she, Fiona? No. We see, we see a lot of Kelsey. Lots of Kelsey. But in one location. One location, except for when she's wearing a fancy dress and looks upset, which could be at the rose, the rose ceremony. ceremony. So we think Kelsey is voted off the island. We're like, hey, to give her credit. We like Kelsey We now. like Kelsey now. I just, the facts. We're telling the truth. We're telling the truth. Journalists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, moving forward. <laughs> Next up we have Hannah Ann. Hannah you know, we saw her doing a lot of this episode promo. Crying. Crying. But was she crying in the house? No, no, no. She was crying at a nice location that looks very similar to where a location would be for a proposal. So here's our theory. I mean, look at this. Look, look at, at that. Look those at are that. those are tears. Look at these plants though. Like, look That's at that. High budget, finale budget. That's on location. And look at them zooming in. Yeah, oh, sorry. tight shot. Them zooming in so we don't know where she is. We know where she is, Bachelor producers. So we think Hannah's gonna make it. Hannah Ann is gonna make it to top two. Top two, at least. At least. At least, maybe top she two. wins. And again, did we, call, did we call this? Did we, did we? Did should we, we just toot our own did we call horn there for a second? Anyways, <laughs> moving forward. Moving forward. Okay, so Hannah Ann's crying. We think that she definitely makes it to the final two. Um, but you guys, that's not all that happened this promo, because you know who else was crying and having a breakdown? Victoria. Resident breakdown person, Victoria F. Woo wee, what is happening here? She's walking away from Peter. She's saying, how can we go on? But you know what that means? Peter's probably gonna keep her around. He's definitely gonna keep her around. I think really telling line is when she said, and you're supposed to meet my parents tonight? Yeah. That, yeah. she's mad at him. She is mad, mad at her. him. She's mad at him. Things are going down. Maybe he's in a mood again. <laughs> so what we think that Victoria probably makes it to, final three, as we stated, because Kelsey was right. already voted off the island. But, but we don't think she's gonna make it to final two. How ever. It's possible. It's possible. This but, guy? Who knows what he's gonna do, really? But you know what the final three is, Fiona? What is it? What is it? 
Fantasy Suites. Do you know what happens in Fantasy Suites? Do you know what happens in Fantasy Suites? I know what happens in Fantasy Suites. What happens in Fantasy Suites? (laughs) You know. (laughs) Okay, so we all know that Peter makes love (laughs) to one or more ladies this season. At least, I think it's more. We think it's more. I think it's more. But you know what? Like, you never know. No. We probably know. We think it's it's more. more. At least two. At least two. Especially because we found out that which we'll get to. Madison is saving herself for marriage. We're gonna circle back to Madison, but back to Peter making love with multiple contestants. What did we see in that promo, Fiona? We see. So we, well, we see we see some of the action. We do. We see some stuff going. Feels down. like we shouldn't be there. Feel, we feels are. yeah. Feel I mean I, it's a lot. Ste- steamy. Very steamy. Ooh. Steamy to say the least. Just stick this over here. here. Okay, now I want you to take a close look at who this could be. Now, I'm no detective, though I should be. But we are investigative journalists. We are investigative journalists. Yeah. If you notice in this photo, hair length tells us everything. Mm-hmm. Does this hair look like Victoria F's hair? Hair that's significantly below the boob? Don't think so. No. Does it look like Madison's hair. Way down to the rib cage. No. That would be a no. Does it look like Hannah Ann's hair? That would be a yes. So we think Hannah Ann is one of the ones to do it, make love to Peter. Or, yeah. But, you know, they, they touched. Listen, we think at this point, hopeful, honestly, are we thinking or are we hoping that Victoria F finally goes home hoping. It's hoping. not love, Peter. It's not it's love. It's drama. It's drama. It's toxic. Let her go. Anyways, that would leave us with two women. However, if you saw in that promo like we did, Madison is not happy about the fact that he has slept with another contestant and or multiple contestants. Mm-hmm. So our theory, based on what we saw in the promo of him saying, why would she leave? Oh, 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 oh. And the ultimatum. Oh, yes. She gave him an ultimatum. Definitely Someone gave him an gave ultimatum. An ultimatum. Yep. It was definitely Madison. And he broke, he broke it. Mm-hmm. He, he didn't. He probably said he would, and then he didn't. We think Madison runs away, which would, whoa, what? She what? takes herself out. What does this remind you of? The mom crying, Peter's mom crying in the promo that we got to see more of? I think yes. Exhibit. Something. Z. Z. (laughs) Peter's mom crying. If you saw in our new promo, she said more and she said, I think God brought her on your something like that. I think God brought her in your... She's calling out God. God. You know who called out God? Madison. So, would it make sense for Peter's mom to say that God brought her into his life? Yes. Yes. Therefore, will Peter end up back with Madison if she does send herself home, or as a, sorry, consolation prize, still pick Hannah Ann. So many questions. What do you think? (laughs) I honestly don't know. I don't know. Because the whole thing this season has been, no spoilers, can't predict the ending. Okay, fine. This is our prediction then. It's these two. She's gonna take herself out of the equation. She's gonna cry and want her back. He's gonna have a meltdown in a bedroom, which we already know. And then I think it, I think that might be where where our journey ends. I think that's as much as we've figured out. However, this is the one possibility I could really see being a thing. Madison sends herself home. So Peter was gonna pick her, but then doesn't and picks Hannah Ann, who feels as though she's second choice. Mm, and especially really, after watching the show. Especially after watching the show. So maybe he picks her but it doesn't work out, and Peter's actually alone. Or, with Julie LaPlaca, his producer. (laughs) Honestly, you tell us. (laughs) Help, please. Please tell us, tell us what's What's happening. What's going on? (laughs) That's all, we did it. So that's what we think is gonna happen, but only time will tell. 
On that note though, what do you think is gonna happen? Yeah. Do you have any crazy theories? If you do, leave them down in the comments. We wanna hear from you and we wanna talk about it because we have to wait together and it's just like we're impatient. But no spoilers. No I don't spoilers. even know if there are spoilers, are but there? if there are, no spoilers. No spoilers. Just theories. Just theories. <laughs> but before you go, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of our Bachelor recaps. Then click right over here to watch another new video. And as always, I'm your host Renee Ariel. You can follow me on social at Renee Ariel. And I'm Fiona Zaring. You can follow me on socials at Fiona Zaring, and we'll see you guys next time.